So we're underway. Fourth game of six. AFL X on AFL Nation. For Get Wines Direct and for Macca's McNuggets, treat yourself. You should live your life by that motto. It's McKernan. Chips short. Good mark taken by Kyle Langford in the number four jumper. Good start for him, isn't it? Now, he's an important player for them. I mean, Laverty's uh, down with injury at the moment, but Langford and Laverty were both reasonably high draft picks that they needed to uh, really make it. And McDonald tip and Woody snuck out the back and will kick his first from uh, directly in front. A little mistake there by Savage. He's standing five metres behind the goal. He's getting ready to kick the ball back in after the set shot. And Tip and Woody's popped up five metres right in front of him. Kicked three goals in the first game that Essendon played. McDonald Tip and Woody. Savage takes the kick in for St Kilda. Marshall, the long target, takes a good mark, but he was out of bounds as he took that mark. He's an interesting player too, Marshall. Very athletic. Good yep. size. Great it's, size. Got some big boys at St Kilda. Whether they can service them all, that'll be the interesting. They've one. got high hopes for Marshall. They, they think do. he's going to be very, very good. And I'm told reliably that has had a very, very good pre-season as well. Right. I mean, everyone has. I was <laughs> everyone except us. You could, you could ask them. You could ask every player. You yeah. had a good we had a great pre-season. Well, actually, to, I'll give up PB's. my source. To be fair, I got it from Spud. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> the only man that hasn't had a good pre-season is Spud. <laughs> but if you ask him, he said oh. he could probably play right now. Oh, my brand's flying. I think he said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Spud, I hope you're listening. I guarantee, if he is, I'll, we'll find out in a minute. <laughs> so they've got all those big boys. Um, Servicing them, Nick. Yes. Is it right that they should be able to play uh, Lewis uh, Pierce? Uh, Lewis, yeah, Pierce. Lewis yes, Pierce. Yes. Yes. Frank's Nick. They've got they've got permission to be able to play him when he's when they've got and other Frankston. players. Yeah. Frankston. rather than it's, it's Well, I know I know Frankston's coached by a uh, out of yes, Scrubble. That's correct. Yep. Who is on the staff and the coaching staff at St Kilda. Well, they got permission. Yeah, there you go. So that they'll play one of their ruckmen in one, at one club and one at the other. Okay, I didn't know that, but sure. that's a bonus. I'm sure about that. Well, sure it's a bonus that. in regards to experience in game time. The only issue could be inconsistencies in game style. If Louis Pierce was ever to play seniors, that he might have been training, oh, not training, playing a different brand of football. My only issue is... One rule for one and others for others. Come on, Cleo. Come on. Equalisation. I just, I'm just, i slightly biased. I just want to see Frankston win a few games this year. It's great to see them back in the VFL. Gary Bacanara has done an amazing job. They were gone. Well, they literally were I gone. I saw them, saw them train during the week. Yep. I was down that way. It's probably on the way back from Portsea or something, were you? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> it's Langford at halfback. Looks for Parrish. Just fisted away from him by Akers, who... Looked up and had nothing to go to. Just kicks it straight back to Langford. Try again. This time he uses McGrath. Broadcast side. Over the top to Begley. Strong built forward midfielder Josh Begley. Made his debut last year in round 22. McKenna's the target inside 50. Goal kicker. Yeah, he is. And goal celebrator too. <laughs> Enjoys <laughs> kicking I, one. I, actually, that is one thing I was disappointed in last night, Plough. Because the game is so fast, after a goal, and it can be a spectacular goal, a zooper or just a really good snap, no opportunity to yeah. celebrate. Yep. This mindset, no I know that... Time. Oh, should be a little bit. Like, this is a game of celebration and enjoyment and getting the crowd involved. Did you see some of the celebrations in the SANFL last weekend? They put $500 oh. up for the best goal celebration. There were players jumping Jump, the fence. Yeah, also, I did stuff. see that. Handstands, it was great. It's Begley kicks to a two-on-one inside 50, the one being McKernan. The two being the St Kilda defenders, and it's off McKernan's hands last. It'll be a Saints ball in the left-back pocket. He's been a great survivor, hasn't he, McKernan? He has. Sort of not really he, ever been able been to a, absolutely establish himself. He's been a fantastic backup, hasn't he? He's always got that ability, just in case one of your senior players goes down, he can fill the role, and big, multiple roles. Big Cam Pedersen. Oh, yes. Dunstan did well, gave it to Akers, who then gave it back to Dunstan and kicks the goal from 10 metres out. That was a nice passage of play. A little bit more traditional. How do you see Blake Akers? Is he going to become a very good player in the competition or is he always going to be that sort of spasmodic player? Yeah, I hope so, Plough. I, th I think the way that he plays his footy is a bit naturally um, inconsistent. It's a bit more flamboyant and probably not as traditional or the the one percenters time and time again as you see the most consistent plays in the league where you know exactly what you're going to get for them. 
I think he does some things, and I remember that game that St Kilda played GWS on a Friday night here. Yep. He almost won the, the last quarter off his own boot yeah, for the dominated. Saints. Against, you know, his peers in the same age group in the GWS, he was dominant. I think he kicked two goals in the last quarter and had 11 on possessions. He was spectacular. So you see that and you get this expectation, this hope that, OK, this is what we get from Blake Hagers. Yeah. Then the next week, I think he nearly got dropped. Yeah. Um, McKernan kicked a super goal, by the way. Which was, which was great. But that is, once again, to give you... <laughs> which it, was it great. is great. Yeah. Very common. Very common in this competition. <laughs> Just another one. Just paid it scant disregard. <laughs> it is, that is one of the greatest challenges at AFL football, yeah. to be able to back up week after week, but also just the preparation day after day at your, at your football club during the week. There is Akers. Kicks back into the corridor. Awkward one for McNeese to control. Look and he's tackled strongly, holding the ball. Akers involved with a follow-up play. And there's always another layer. Because when you do, and all of a sudden you start becoming really consistent, then the next layer is of oh, someone's actually coming to you yeah, now. Like there's, yeah, there's always yeah. another layer on top. That's what I love about the game, though, Plough. A bit more, you know, holistically. This game is unrelenting. Yes. Just when you think that you're finding your feet at AFL level and you're a consistent senior player, you're just in the team. What's the next challenge? The bar is always, you're just always reaching for something else. And I've often said about the Hawthorne trip, um, the, the three premierships in a row. They wanted four. So you settle with three, and I would have been happy with one, but they win three. I'm tipping they went into that preseason. We need four. Yeah. What's our next challenge? You can never complacent with what you've currently got. I think they were the first side to bring drones to training and you know, to sort of find where the holes in their zone were. So they weren't stopping for anyone. Yeah. McKenna through the middle of Eddie Hat Stadium. Hambles to McNeese, who's at, I guess you could say, left half forward. And it rolls through for a behind. Essendon, 17. St Kilda 18, seven minutes played on the Ray White clock. We'll have a chat to Luke McDonald in a few minutes Nick, from the North Melbourne Footy Club. Not when you're getting towards the end of your career, because as a senior player, you don't want this pre-season stuff. But when you're a kid, like and you've done the whole summer, you'd be loving this, wouldn't you? Being out in front of this many supporters. It, it is a great feeling. and it's like, <laughs> Take this in the right context. It's almost the most enjoyable part of the year. because The season is so unrelenting from week in, week out monotony of preparing, competing, recovering, that this was the period where you've done, it's almost the athletic season of the pre-season, just running and just constantly prepping your body for battle. Yeah. But this is that little period where you go, thank God we're playing games. Yeah. Thank God the workload of Monday to Friday backs off a little bit where my body can feel like it can recover. And I actually get to go out and try and get a kick of the footy. That'd be great. Against yeah. an opposition. I love this time of year, player. Yeah. To get ready... And I wasn't a fantastic runner, so thank God the footballs were coming out and the ball was, you know, you're allowed to go win your footy or be a part of it. I'll let you call this bit, Jack, because that's called a ball up. It is. Something we haven't seen. That's the first time tonight we've had a ball up. So from the stoppage, St Kilda kick it inside 40. Almost an opportunity for Josh Battle. He couldn't mark. And McKenna, as he so often did last year, tucks the footy under the arm and runs away from half-back, pulls the handbrake up and kicks wide to McGrath. He marks. Right in front of the interchange gates. Kicks out on the lead. McKernan wanted it on his head. McGrath didn't read the cues. And it was chopped off by Savage. He finds battle. Eight and three quarter oh, minutes gone. He's kicked out of the guts of Ben McNeese. Savage picks up the crumbs from the X. Zuper gone. Is that face or tummy? It's come oh. straight off the ground. Face, I think. It was face, was it? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Not long before half-time, Essendon 17, St Kilda have just opened this up a little bit. They're 34. You know, as I said before, tonight's play started. I don't think the Bombers are going to win a game, play. <laughs> <laughs> if you have just joined this, is McKernan marks 35 out from goal. Nick Del Santo before the game. Three minutes in, they kick the first goal, and Nick Del Santo says... They'll win it tonight. <laughs> yeah, I declared, Colling, I declared Collingwood last night before it all started. So, so they we, won all, we won all. Saad from outside the arc has wobbled through a super goal. A little bit poor defence there by Jimmy Webster, being a little bit critical. I know there's not a lot of defence, but Adam Saad's only going to go one way, player. He's, he's left-footed and solely left-footed. The right <laughs> foot's only there for a bit of balance. Yep. Half time will sound. And St Kilda have a small but important lead. 34 to 27 
AFL Nation is bringing you AFLX tonight from Etihad Stadium. It's for Get Wines Direct and for Macca's McNuggets. Let's get down to Luke McDonald from the North Melbourne Football Club. Kangas were successful in the first game. Luke, good evening. Thanks for joining us. It looked like you guys knew what you were doing out there. You were pretty organised. Uh, yeah, well, we, we actually played it last year. We were one of the first teams to give it a crack. And, um, yeah, it was it was good fun. Good to have a few of the older and younger boys out there. So, yeah, it was a good time. Luke, Terry Wallace upstairs. Uh, the other interesting thing, yeah, you guys played marginally taller than some of the other sides, obviously, with Majak at one end and, and uh, Wadey down in, in the forward structure. Yeah, I think we're just trying to get as much time into Madge um, down back as possible. As you can see, he's, he's been going real well. So, yeah, I think he, he plays pretty much as a small. He's, he's like a cat when he hits the ground. So, yeah, and Wadey, um, I, I don't know, I think he's pretty flat. He has to play. He's that old. I would have thought he'd have the night off. Um, don't think he's as old as Dale, though. But, uh, but yeah, he's, he wasn't too rapid. But, no, he went well, Wadey. Good evening, Luke. Uh, you guys have seemed to have done the most amount of practice. Have you got any tactics that some clubs don't have? And have you noticed anything in that first hit out that you thought worked for you or didn't work from what you've done previously? Jeez, to be honest, we didn't have too many tactics. We sort of had a bit of a meeting with the squad yesterday and um, went over a couple of things. But yeah, it was just, which is obviously hard for me. So we weren't allowed to bomb it long too much. Um, we had to try <laughs> hit the shorter ones. And um, and yeah, that's pretty pretty much the main tactic because as you can see, they drop off a lot and. Yeah, it's, there's not much defence. Have you found this game a little bit difficult personally that it requires a high skill level to be able to maintain possession and hit your targets going forward? Luke? Oh, this is a setup. As soon as I said I was speaking to Nick Dalsan, I was like, here we go. <laughs> I, I have to give the boys and the listeners a little bit of insight. This is a man that is left footed and compares himself very closely to Matt Suckling with his ability to kick the football. Is that right? And you did have a crack at him when he missed that one uh, earlier. Well, on, that was my, that's my follow up question. You'd have a shot from outside 50 Willie onto the left and, and sprayed it severely. Luke. Yeah, I was. I got a bit excited. I've been winding the boys up all week saying, watch the Zoopers. We'll have a sponsorship after tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I haven't been great great yet. But uh, there's one more game, Dale, and um, we, we had that one comfortable, so hopefully we can. Are, are you playing the next game? The boys are warming up at the end of the ground. Yeah, well, actually, I'm, I've counted the numbers, so I think I'm out there. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm playing, so. <laughs> no worries. Hey, Luke, thanks for the chat. Dale, if you need yeah. any advice on sponsorship, just go to Dale's Instagram. He's got it all covered. <laughs> oh, <mate. laughs> yeah. One of the most disgraceful pages I've ever seen. At least, um, at least you follow me. One more thing about Dallas Instagram, he refused to follow any of his teammates. Like, <laughs> I see you every day. Why would I want to follow you? I see you guys dis- every day. What a disgrace. Ever since you left, he deleted my number. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lukey. Right, see, see you, boys. <laughs> Luke McDonald from the North Melbourne Football Club. That's great. Yeah, he's good. I mean, he took you down and we, yeah. got, we had a chat in between games. Good access. Well, you just, as you guys said earlier on, I mean, you start to feel the personalities and teammates as well. So, so as the second half begins, it's St Kilda 34, Essendon 27, and we're going to see another ball up. No, high tackle. Might have been a little bit fortunate. It looked a, bit, a little bit that way. McGrath's going to have a shot for a super goal. It's a low ball. And he's just off target. But if you're wondering about the squad that was released from St Kilda in the last couple of days and you're wondering why they're not playing, they've actually got a lot of senior players just cooling their jets on the boundary line. They'll be, I assume, in the second game. Ben Long takes that momentum, kicks long, but doesn't kick accurate. So I look down the bench, I can see Memory, yep. Seb Ross, the current or reigning best and fairest winner, Sam Gilbert, Mav Weller. Mav Weller. We spoke to Kobe Stevens earlier. So I've got a lot of experience, I'm assuming, that will be coming on in the second game. I'll pose you both a question in a minute as Webster wobbles at inside 40. McGrath and Akers one-on-one. He's a strong boy, Blake Akers. He bodied him off, but then he just about kicked Andrew McGrath's head off in the process. Just didn't quite think his way through no. that one. Um, how would you approach it if you're Melbourne and you played the first game and you're not up until game four? Sorry, game five. How do you approach that in terms of staying warm and yeah, I, I, you do it's a full, you do a full cool down. You've got no choice. So it's, it's preparation, and that's why the fitness staff seem to be the, the bosses of football clubs these days to make to make sure that their playing group are out there healthy. I would think that if you're a senior player and you understand your body, you'd have that discussion of saying, okay, let me play one of them. The risk of me warming up, playing, cooling down, warming up, playing, cooling down, is probably a bit much for this time of the year. Yeah. If you're a young kid, it's bad luck. They don't need to warm up. Just do it. They're like snakes. As long as the weather's okay, they can go out and play. <laughs> They're like snakes. I'll never forget this story. 
as is that Josh Battle? Oh no, he's handballing off. Acres who Acres goes Savage. back. Savage from 42. This is the super goal. Well, never, there was this moment at St Kilda, my last year. Um, so a few going back four or five years now. And we were playing in Perth, and it was the night before the game. You fly over, you do your recovery as a group. And I thought, my body's getting a little bit older, Plough. I was 30-odd. Yeah. I need to do extra recovery. And it overlooks a big park at the hotel we stayed at Perth. And as I was doing my extra recovery in the port, it's like an ice bath, I could hear some kids having a, a kick in the park below me. I look over. It was the first and second years <laughs> of St Kilda that just wanted to go out and have a kick in the park for fun. <laughs> and at that moment, I realised how old I was yes. and that these kids don't need to do some of the recovery and preparation that the senior boys or the older boys have to do. I know exactly where you were. <laughs> Essendon 29, St Kilda 36, three minutes played. Second half on the tyre power Falcon tyre sale scoreboard. Parrish on the broadcast side, the Medallion Club side at Etihad Stadium. And it was to Saad. Pops it over the top to Begley. That's 15. Marshall did that well, just didn't give Saad any opportunity to be able to get past him in his speed. Begley's kick lace out to Sean McKernan. And he's going to get a chance to kick his second goal of this game from 30 metres out directly in front. Oh. Lays it off to McKenna. Super goal opportunity missed. Well, both teams are obviously learning. Anytime someone marks the ball inside forward 40, say 30 to 40, they all hover around the back, waiting for a handball around. But the opposition are now becoming aware of that, and they're hovering there just yeah. to try and uh, cut off the handball. The kick to a one-on-one, -on -one, but well, Zaharakis was playing in front of Marshall and well, Marks. Regardless, Nick, what it does is it just closes down your time and space. So yes. even if they can't get a hand to them, uh, where earlier on we were sort of seeing that they were getting enough time to be able to settle to have that kick, now they're sort of rushing the kick. We've seen a couple sprayed. Four minutes gone. St Kilda by six points. That's all on the Ray White clock. Zaharakis in the middle now he's just going to run around the bigger marshal it didn't chase all that well zaharakis has a second bounce and his kick was a shocker off the side of the boot i like zaharakis this season last year player challenging at times you know got squeezed out of maybe his preferred position at times and just worked his way through it i thought he had a really solid year I agree. and it was off the back of an more average one for him the year before yeah. as well so I mean you know there was a, a little bit of uh, talk about you know if you want to be part of you know, the leadership group or a leader of the football club you know you've got to be able to do that consistently shows great field. character yeah. and it? you know he, he took that on board and he actually fought back really strongly in your experiences when something like that happens how many players or roughly a rough percentage would go the other way and say well stuff you a little bit like I'm a BNF winner, I'm an established senior player, I've been, you know, successful yep. in my career thus far. Opposed to the other, well, okay, I'm going to take it on the chin, I'm going to dig in and, and get back to work. I, I think it shows you real character types and you, you top high-end characters that handle it, deal with it, you know, because it is, as you say, a bit of a slap in the face and then, you know, show exactly what they're worth to your, uh, to your football club, you know, credit to him. Webster accepts in the pocket. Kick. Good kick. Squares it up to Long. Who could have got a free kick. Umpire let it go. Battles quick snap. is out of bounds on the full. Just to follow up on that topic, um, player, did you ever use that as a coaching tactic to try and find out more about a player, about how to treat them in the long run? Or whether to say, this this young fellow or this person's a part of the program going forward or he's, or he's not? More particularly, not so much when they're very senior because I think you know what you've got by yes. that stage. Yep. And... If they are someone that's inclined to crack it a little bit, well, you've got, you don't want that to be the case. So you, you've got to mix and mould that, know and understand what you've got. But with some younger players, that's a strong mark. It's a very, very good mark taken one-on-one. -on -one. It's the sort of stuff that Saints fans want to see from Josh Battle. I'll have a chat about him in, in one second. Yeah, just to finish it off, um, just from my point of view, you would challenge some of the younger players just to sort of see about what sort of character you actually had. And the youngster kicks his first goal. Now, we know he was still at Halbury last year, so still a, a student, but he's got enormous work ethic, uh, Josh Battle. I, I think he's a chance still to be 
to be getting some senior football this year in the, this St Kilda lineup. Well, with that said, Plough, where or so how many well, forwards are they going to play? Well, they're going to play three. Yeah. So. So Bruce and memory of the locks. You would think. So it's out of McCartan, Marshall, and uh, Battle. Correct. Yep. Correct. That, that, that's the way I sort of see it. And they're so different because McCartan's more your your stay at home, crash and bash, as the Bombers add. A goal. A goal. Yes. Nice finish after a lovely grab that was. So, like, yes, like this, yeah. so McCartan's more your uh, stay at home, your hit the pack, crash and bash. Battle's the opposite. I mean, he's get up the ground, high work ethic, you know, one side of the ground. Uh, you know, link up your defence to your to your attack. A completely different player. And then Marshall's more athletic, completely different one again. Does that come down to who's playing the best football at that particular stage? Or does that go back to a coaching staff game plan about what style of player best suits? Both. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think yeah. I think both. I, when you mention those names, I automatically say, surely that's McCartan. It has to be, he has to be the third tall. Savage with a Zupa goal from the X. Gives St Kilda a nice little lead. Well, 52 to 37. Well, I think he balances them up the best. Because if you think uh, Bruce is your hard worker at the moment, Bruce is battle. If yes. battle's going to get, he probably has to take Brucey's spot yep. to the side, which won't be earlier. It'll be more later. Uh, so he's doing your hard yards. You've got memory, I call it the third tall yep. of that lot. Um, so to me, your key power forward, you want that you want to crash the packs and, and do that needs to be the part. That'll be a free kick to the Saints. and Plus, as a number one pick, they need him to play. They need him to, to stand up and I play. Think yeah. Just, just on him for another two or three years, I think, in the summer. McCartan. Yes. yes. Yep, yep. So they're invested in him as well. So not Saints, long left here. Saints going okay. 52. The Don's 37. Just hang you, on. You just put the moz on the Don's perfectly. <laughs> this, this Have you it. ever? <laughs> Poor kid. Have you it ever? It wasn't deliberate. I actually went through their team sheets. Essendon Before fans. The game, I thought they've, they're on here. Bombers fans tuning in on 1116 SEN, 5AA in Adelaide, all of our great AFL Nation partners. They just had their night ruined by Nick Del Santos. Well, Zach Merritt's my favourite player in the league, and I would have loved to have seen him in this format. He, his ball reading ability, his ball use, I thought would be spectacular in this, this game, player. So from. Outside the arc, Jack Sinclair sets it up and doesn't make the distance. Mark's taken by McNeese. Yeah, he's become an outstanding player, hasn't he? But he's still got another layer because he got tagged a couple of times last year and uh, yeah, I had to sort of battle through understanding how that looks. Yes, it's a different game. There's no doubt about that when you're getting that amount of attention. But that amount of attention released Zarak. Yeah. St Kilda win there first. Essendon go home 0-2. St Kilda 52, Bombers 37.